Hello, Fremont. This week, we're starting the second chapter of Mark, and we're looking at verses 1 through 12. You might think you know about this passage already, lowering the paralyzed man through the roof, especially because it's told in three of the four Gospels. But I'm going to encourage you to pause the video, like I ask every time, and read the passage all the way through verse 12, even if you think you know the story. There is so many things happening in this passage. We learn where Jesus is living and that he's drawing quite a crowd everywhere he goes. We meet the pesky oppositional scribes for the first time in the book of Mark. We hear Jesus refer to himself as the son of man for the first time. And let's not forget about the very determined friends who took apart a roof in order to get their paralyzed friend in front of Jesus for some of the healing everyone was talking about. Let's break this passage down a little bit, highlight a few pieces, and get ourselves ready for the message on Sunday. Here we go. Mark lets us know in verses 1 and 2 that Jesus is living in Capernaum now, and people are flocking to him not just for healing and miracles, but now to hear the word of God preached by Jesus. By telling us this, Mark is reiterating what we've seen in the later part of chapter 1, when Jesus is preaching all over Galilee that Jesus is the Messiah that people have been waiting for. Mark is reminding the reader that Jesus isn't a prophet only, he is much, much more. But we'll get to that in a second. First, let's look at these very determined friends. These very determined friends are anxious for physical healing for their friend. Their faith shines through with their determination and their creativity on getting their friend in an audience with Jesus. Jesus sees this and responds to this faith by forgiving the man's sins, and then later healing him physically. They have changed their friend's life. This, this forgiveness of sins, though, that part really riles up the pesky oppositional scribes. Again and again in his lifetime, Jesus will address this oppositional behavior and unbelief that Jesus is who he claims to be. Since John the Baptist, these men have been questioning how a mere human can have the authority to forgive sins. Jesus addresses their questioning in verses 8 and 9 with questions of his own. Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk? Now, obviously, actually forming the words of one statement is not easier or harder than forming the words of another statement. And to the people in this house at Capernaum, only Jesus' authority over the physical healing can be witnessed because there wasn't visual proof to be witnessed when Jesus exercised his divine power and forgave the man his sins. The paralyzed man's biggest need wasn't physical healing. It was spiritual. This man needed holiness before God more than he needed healing from Jesus, and Jesus knew this. Jesus shows those pesky oppositional scribes his divine power and heals the man physically also, stating, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And the man does. But still, the scribes refuse to see the truth of who Jesus is. When Jesus calls himself the Son of Man in verse 10, this is a phrase the scribes would be familiar with. In Daniel chapter 7, Daniel shares a vision he had of one like a Son of Man who is given dominion over the earth by God. Jesus is being very intentional when he uses this phrase as a statement of his authority. And this is good news that people flocking to hear Jesus preach needed to hear. The good news we need to hear, Jesus is the one who has power over sin. Let's go back to that question Jesus asked those pesky oppositional scribes. Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or you are healed? Physically healing the paralyzed man was a miracle that bewildered the crowd. But forgiving the man his sins was much harder, more powerful phrase for Jesus to utter. Jesus has the authority to forgive sins. Just like the paralyzed man, our biggest need is always spiritual. We need holiness before God more than we need healing from God. Our sin separates us from God, and so we desperately need reconciliation with him. 
Jesus' death on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and his rising from the grave and triumphing over sin is what brings us back into relationship with God. His sacrifice is why we have reconciliation. I'll see you Sunday.